So list all of those. Get crazy with those and then start testing. Are these real or are they just perceptions? And I showed you the nine dots. You saw a box, but there wasn't a box there. We perceived it because that's the way we've been conditioned to think. And if you look around the room, what's the primary shape of the room? Squares. Squares. What's interesting is that nine dots exercise when given to Inuits, native Eskimos, where squares don't exist in nature, they don't struggle with that problem. Because they don't perceive, they aren't forced into a perception of squares. So assumption listing. List all of the assumptions that people might have in the room that are keeping the ideas from flowing. Next one, have an idea for a different kind of wheelbarrow. You don't have to draw this if you don't want, it's up to you. So here's my wheelbarrow. Got a wheel down here on the bottom. I've got two latches, got the latch on the bottom right. When I want to dump stuff, I open that latch. To load it, I've got the latch on the top right. I throw that open, put the stuff in, close my latch. What's your initial response, your initial feedback to my wheelbarrow? What do you think? I think it's a great idea. It'll fall over. It'll fall over. What else? I heard some. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, 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 like a truck. Anything that you move. I mean, anytime I'm moving a refrigerator or moving anything heavy, it looks like that. What else do you need? What else do you need? Other feedback. I'm thinking it would work as long as you have a person attached. Yeah. Yeah. It'll work only if there's a person there. Yeah. Or lean it against a building. What were some of the things that you didn't voice the first thought? Where are the handles? What's that? Where are the handles? Where are the handles? Where are the handles? Where the handles? <laughs> what else? What else did you think when you first saw it? The latches aren't It'll waterproof. Fall over. The latches what? The latches aren't waterproof. <laughs> what? Latches aren't waterproof. A lot of people will say, well, if you load material in there, the latches won't open. Right? It'll tip over. It's unstable. So what do you notice about, maybe not the first things we verbalized, but the first things we thought? What you can't do, why it doesn't work. So generally negative. Right. Doesn't look like we what we picture it. It doesn't look like a wheelbarrow from our denotation. Okay, we're getting closer to answer Christy's question. But our, our definition of what a wheelbarrow is. Psychologists, psychiatrists call that the reptilian response. All right, our brain has three structures. According to the triune theory of the brain, we've got three structures. We've got the innermost, which is the reptilian brain, fight or flight or freeze. The mammalian brain, which is the loving, caring, nurturing part of the brain. And then the neocortex. That's the part that differentiates us from the rest of the animal world. Right? That and our ability to use PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> so the reptilian brain, our, that reptilian part of our brain is structured just like all reptiles. When, it's, when a reptile sees something new and different, it sees it as one of three things. Food, mate, threat. Showed you wheelbarrow. You quickly realized your reptilian brain kicked in and said, okay, not food. Look again, not me. <laughs> Must be threat. Must kill wheelbarrow. <laughs> right, so we immediately went to a little bover. Need somebody to lean on it or hold it up. Can't hold much material. Doesn't look like a wheelbarrow. There. Wheelbarrow dead now. Right? Mission accomplished. And if you think that doesn't happen, oh, but we're not like that. I'll share a story with you. Chester Carlson. Ever heard of Chester Carlson? Been dead for a long time. Chester Carlson had an idea in the 1930s that was very similar to a photographic process. Needed funding for his idea. So he went to the big photography company in the 1930s. Kodak. So went to Kodak said, look, I want, I've got this idea on how we can reproduce documents. Very similar to the way you develop photographs. Can you help me out? And they went immediately to the reptilian brain and said, no, go away. We don't do that. And if we did, we just use mimeographs. Some of us can remember mimeographs. So you think, 
that company, which was named Kodak, but then Chester started his own company, Xerox. Xerox. Called Xerox. They think Xerox. Have not come from those origins. Be more open to new ideas. Several years later, a couple of young gentlemen went to the board of Xerox and said, look, we've got this idea for a new kind of computer. We built a prototype using Atari video game parts and parts from some of your Xerox copiers. You don't have to be a programmer to use this computer. And Xerox went to the reptilian brain and said, to whom? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs and Wozniak. Mm -hmm. So you think Apple Computer, having come from those origins, would be a little more open to new ideas, right? Young gentleman went to Apple and said, look, I've got this idea for an operating system. I think we could work together. <laughs> Who was it? Bill Gates. And they said, but just for a second, think how big Kodak might be. If instead of immediately going to the reptilian room, said, how might that work? In what way could that be useful? What could we do to make it better? What are some weak points there that we could mitigate? Uh, several of us were talking before we started tonight. Many of us worked at EDS. EDS started Ross Perot. Mm -hmm. 1962, February, Ross had already maxed out. He couldn't make any more money selling machines for IBM. Had an idea. Ooh. I wonder if it would make much business sense if we could actually manage the data for our clients. So he pitched it to IBM. Yeah. Uh, we sell boxes <laughs> this big. We don't do that. And he started an industry, started an age. Every and when I I do this session or something similar, I tell large organizations I say. Every contract you've lost, somebody in your company knew how to save it. But they had long since stopped sharing, they had long ago stopped sharing their ideas because you wheelbarrowed them. You went to the reptilian brain. Somebody can't, and I, I do it, ah, drives me nuts, my kids will come to me. I say, ah, dad, check out this, my, my youngest loves drawing. And he's getting really good now, but I remember when he was six and seven, he'd do a drawing. He said, Dad, check this out. I'm like, what is that? And I, I could hear, I could hear that, killing his, a little bit of his spirit. How often do we do it to ourselves, let alone others? We have ideas and they, they just wither and die on the vine. We never give them an opportunity. Edison at least a thousand failed experiments for the filament. Einstein worked for 17 years on his theories of relativity. <coughs> WD-40 is called WD-40 because the first 39 experiments failed. <laughs> so be willing to challenge your assumptions, go beyond that one right answer and look past, find a tool to get past that reptilian response. The easiest one I've found is the PMI. So somebody comes to you with an idea. Your immediate response may be, you know, must kill the wheelbarrow. But uh, what I've started doing is when somebody comes to me with a new idea, I say, okay, let's, let's sit down, let's come up with all the pluses to the idea first. Then let's look at the minuses. And not minuses as a reason to kill it, but something that needs to be examined. Weaknesses to the idea. And it's important that you start with the pluses. Because if you start with the minuses, you'll never get any further. So plus, minus, and then interesting is things we just don't know. We need to do more research. By the way, that wheelbarrow exists. It's a very simplified rendition. But that wheelbarrow is designed for hauling materials up the sides of buildings. But can you imagine if I, I worked at a construction company and I came to Jeff, my boss, and I said, look, I've got this idea for an Akata wheelbarrow. And his first response was our reptilian response. My wheelbarrow doesn't get made. And what happens next time I have an idea? I'm not telling Jeff. 
And if I know that value, that idea has value, I'm going to take it to the competition or become the competition. <coughs> so plus minus interesting. Right, last little technique here. How many of you good with math? How many of you not willing to raise your hands anymore because you know I'm going to turn you? Okay. <laughs> So we're going to do just some simple addition. You don't need to write this down. We're going to go too fast for you to write it down. We're going to do some simple addition out loud all together. All right? So what's that number? One thousand. All right. All together? One thousand. So we're going to keep a running sum. Systems. <laughs> <laughs> These are the people who are putting together programs to 